Yeah, so like Keith uh, is showing um, behind. Uh, he's going to show us what he was up to for the last six weeks and uh, show us new prototype. Ooh. Ooh. Cool. So, hi, this is what I've been working on for the past six weeks. Um, also, hi to all and all, everyone from Nick's stream. Um, we're now like doubling the normal number of viewers we have on this channel. Ooh. 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 Okay, so quick hello from me, uh, for people who don't know who I am, um, I'm Keith, I am the house's resident clock jet expert, this mouse is not exactly in the position for being able to click on it while standing in frame, and I've been at Spell, Spell Collector Vet for about nine months now, I've been here since middle of August, so almost a year. Um, I would like to be able to get authorization to play this, but these are things I've been working on over the past few months. Uh, one of them was a recreation of the Farm 57 wall market, another one was Farm 57 as a roguelike, which I think is a seven-day roguelike. There is some flying planets, which I'll try and get the Twitter links for later. And uh, Pretty Good Generation Game Jam, which was a fancy city generator. But I've had no real projects that I've been working on since I moved in, and it's probably time to change all that. Also, it was my birthday yesterday. <laughs> Much better. There we go. So, this is previous stuff I worked on. Today, which includes a recreation ball market for Part 7, Part 7 as a roguelike, a spinning ball of planets, which is all procedure generated at runtime as well, and a city generator, which uses a style bearer grip. So, lots of things I've been working on over the past few months, but none of them actually a meaty project. I have a lot of projects that I want to work on. Um, there's about 30 of them. And I did logos for all of them. Um, a few years ago, someone set a post one game idea a day, and it's like, I can do that easily. I've got this many of them already. So, how do you pick one project to work on? Well, you trim it down to the ones you've been working on for the past year. And I made a list. I sort out people who I respect advice. I pitched the ideas of the games to them. And I went away, thought very long and hard about what I was working on. And settled on, well, the most complicated one. Uh, working title for now, because I just need something that pops out fairly easily in my projects folder. But Mr. Main is a infinite world defensive strategy game. Let me just read my pitch document for it. Mr. Main is a strategy game set in an infinite fog of war, played from an overhead map view. From the fog of war will emerge endless hordes of shadowy ghost monsters that you will seek to attack the domain you're protecting. You will have to deploy armies to repel them. As you explore for a way to defeat your adversary, you will find new areas to ally with and gain a stronger holding in the area, but this will increase how much you have to defend. Given that it's going to be partial procedure generated, it will have partial procedure generated storyline and a customizable game length thanks to the fact that I will be able to build a sliding difficulty system based on the world generation process. And I chose this project mainly because I've got most of the bits already built for it. I've got a functioning world generator as it is that I've been working on for a few years and it doesn't take very much to reskin it for this project. The actual core design loop, while I can big it up as being a save the universe thing, is conceptually very simple. It's moving units around the map. But I get to have a large amount of scope to play about with it if I want to make um, a more complicated game. I wrote primarily art there, but it's not. It's primarily programming. It's the opposite. I can actually do a lot of this without art until right at the end. Influence-wise, I have a few or which are on screen at the moment. Um, a lot of people will recognize that this who's closely to things like Total War or Heroes of Might Magic. The major influence is the one in the top middle, which is an old Sega Saturn game called Dragon Force, which has nothing to do with the Power Metal Band. But I've also got a massive amount of influence from things like Port Condor minigame from Party 7 and Shining Force. Not just that, but artistically influence-wise, I want things like the Final Fantasy XIV Overworld, which has a one predominant continent called Eorzea, which is all very interconnected with a huge amount of biomes, but seems to fade 
closely together, as does endless legend with its large like, county level focus on where your specimens can be placed. Traditional game wise, I am influenced quite heavily by things like Room Wars and Mage Knight, particularly when it comes to revealing the terrain between tiles. And as far as role playing games are concerned, the top right corner is Ravenloft, where a lot of this comes from. Very quickly on the world generator, people seen me post about that before. I can explain all the complicated parts of it, saying that it is a fractal generated world space in chunk level with a neighbor aware algorithm for determining borders. But I can far better explain it by saying that there is a write up for it and that QR code there. <laughs> in Procjam's semi annual magazine seats. Because it is a neighbor aware algorithm, I can influence things like what the dominant biome of the plant life is going to be, what the temperature is going to be, and also pace the game to how well the player is doing and build an AI director style storyline with this at the same time. If the player is ahead of the curve, I can put more filler content in. If they're rapidly approaching the limits of their playtime, I can put the ending of the game as a next few response rather than using a traditional style world generator that uses something like Perlin Noise, which would not be able to accurately predict how long you would be playing the game for. Whilst this version of the world uses a square grid, the new version I'm using for this is using a Voronoi grid, which results in less spaces and a more discrete area of where you're traveling to and from, and also makes things look a bit more organic. So all well and good of me saying this, but let us see if the prototype wants to run, and it should do. I, I didn't spend six weeks making a presentation, I have spent six weeks making a demonstrable version of the game. And here it is now. So, what it will be doing is generating a world, and it's just generated the first province. And it's generated me a tower here with a explorer unit, which are ostriches. I can step this ostrich and tell it to move over this way and unpause the game. As the light of the tower spreads out, it's going to start generating more terrain as it encounters it. So that area at the bottom right has been generated and that's a new province. And we can go explore it. So let us move our ostrich down this way. You can see we've got a lake and a savanna in this area down here. Some more, some more generations going on. This is all randomly generated. And we can see that there's an enemy stronghold down here. Because it's all very debug tools at the moment, I can tell it to build armies here, and then select the army and tell it to move out. That's the castle, that's the army. And I can also spawn some enemies in debug mode. Let's pause you for a bit. So we've got an enemy army that's going to be walking towards my castle. The enemy armies will spawn at the edge of the fog of war, so if you've explored the area they won't spawn there. So it's in the player's interest to go exploring as wide as possible to keep the spawning of the enemies away from their defences. And if I select this unit over here and move him back over there, we'll see which one reaches it first. Fights will take place as part of matter of course, and the way I've coded it is with a command pattern so that whilst this battle result screen pops up pretty much instantly, it's as a matter of me saying, no, wait for the battle results to be processed, preferably by going to a different scene and running an entire battle mini game, and then come back to it with this information here. It's all set up in a way that I can extend from this base prototype into a much richer game. As you can see here from the log, the enemy was attacked, both of them took one damage. And if I select and pause the game slightly, you can see the health of the army has gone down slightly. I believe this explorer is about to get attacked by the monsters, so I'm just going to move them away. Nope, they got caught. I will see, oops, and we'll move this enemy, we'll go avenge our lost explorer unit.
And that is the prototype I've been working on. You can explore out from this island all around. You can send this enemy, this army in to attack this enemy tower. It'll take a while, but they'll get there and start attacking it with a siege mode. It'll take five attacks and do it, but eventually this will turn blue and it'll become our castle. I've got a day-night system at the moment. Currently it's midnight, so the visibility range is lower. And it's also based on how tall the terrain you're currently standing on is. We've just beaten the castle, and that's ours, and we have a much wider visibility cone of this savannah area. And that's about it. From this, I am going to make a more complicated battle system. I'm going to replace explorers with hero units and add dungeons for you to go explore on a much lower personal level. From that, I will work, weld in the plot and weld in procedural generated elements for your heroes who will have their own plot lines to follow as they level up. And as I add more and more features, there's going to be rivers, roads, forests, swamps, all these other things going into these terrain areas, as well as different enemy types. So it won't just be a single army and a single enemy, it will be made up of different fantasy creatures, as you all would expect. I'll then be taking this concept to as many artists as possible and asking them to see if they're interested in working on it with me. So that is my presentation. Oops. Please follow me on Twitch, it should be at the link in the top right. Please also follow me on Twitter, I am KNSB everywhere on the internet as far as I know. Follow me on itch as well I guess, and if you're interested in seeing the paper I wrote up on the Infinite World Generator, it's that the QR code over there. Are there any questions? Do the entities move on the Voronoi grid as well, or do they move over it? They move on the Voronoi grid, so each grid is one cell in the world. Okay. So each location will be a place where an army can stand, or a monster can be, or a dungeon can be located, or a patch of forest. Each is going to be a single <coughs> battlefield level, battlefield size area of the map. Would it be PvE or PvP, and then also in the multiplayer? I'm going to keep it purely as PvE, so single player for now. Um, but what I do want to do is get it so you can export your province that you generate or any of the provinces you generate and have them included in other players' games, preferably through something like a QR code or a shareable image. Depends how well I can get that swung based on how much data is in the levels. This is why I also want to have a high level of customization so you can set up your kingdom or your republic or whatever your domain is going to be as your personal thing and then have that something you can send to one of your friends. Uh, you asking when it's out, but uh, <laughs> do you have any timeline at all for... So the timeline for this is I'm going to finish off the prototype and make it bug free as best I can and then a lot of it is going to be sitting down and setting up what my sprints are going to be. I would like to get a alpha version with at least half the features I just talked about out by July. Like That's the end goal for this one. And then start bouncing ideas for, for progression with this half of artists after I contact them sometime over the summer. At that point though, I think I'll have to start working out what I'll be doing for full-time work. So full-time development, this will slow down. Um, why did you choose to do this kind of grid for the game? It ended up looking a bit more natural than a square grid did. I looked at whether it was going to be good square grid and said I can round the edges or I can do something like marching cubes to make the terrain look round, well, look smoother. But ultimately, each of those chunks is going to be, like, I could have done it by 8 by 8 or 10 by 10 but that ends up creating a lot of parts of the terrain that are very interesting and that's a hundred extra things for the pathfinding algorithm to work out whereas each of these chunks is now about 20 in size which is more interesting and easy to cope with from a player's point of view and also less murder on the pathfinding system. Will this create any problems for the artists, main guard testers for the game? Potentially when it comes to the landscape side of things. Uh, so building um, procedural generated terrain with a Borno grid is complicated and I spent about four days trying to get the world generated the same as 
that is at the moment with the textures and the vertex colors and all the pursuit of geometry going. But the same way that I was tinkering around with the planet generator at the end of last year, I can position things on those grids and then make it so that a set number of fixed assets are located on various parts of the tray. I can then allocate various flats for where units should stand and then move on and then animate things around accordingly with hopefully simplish tweaks as long as I keep everything consistent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.